Okay, so I'm just going to take a few minutes just to show you some of the routing possibilities in Logic. Uh, I've just created a little song here, um, just thrown together out of some of the loops we've got in Logic. So I'm just going to quickly play you what we've got. Um, I'm just going to mute. A uh, quick way of muting is to just hold down one and then drag it down all of them, um, just like you were dragging across a mixing desk. And then you can turn off in one go. So I've just got some drums. Just a little general loop. I've got some bass, and I've just added an EQ on the bass, because it's got quite a lot of content down here at 150 hertz, so I've just taken a bit and I've just taken the extreme lows out. I've added a guitar, and I've panned it slightly right, and I've just adjusted the volume of these to just get them to sit right. I've also got an organ, now this organ came bundled with all these presets, so I haven't added any of these. Hand it opposite just to fill up the uh, stereo image. I've then got uh, a main vocal here and some backing vocals. I'm not missing her. I'm not missing her at all. I'm not missing her. I'm not missing her. Okay, so that's the loop, and I'm just going to show you some of the ways that you can use aux tracks. Aux tracks are used for routing to effects and also for grouping channels together, and I'm going to show you both those ways now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group together my guitar and my organ, because these are like my um, my backing, really. I've got my, uh, my rhythm section with the drums and the bass, and I've also got these, these two instruments that I might want to, for example, um, turn up or pull down together or EQ together. Um, this also works if you've got um, eight or nine drum tracks and you want to create one fader to uh, rule them all as it were or you've got six or eight backing vocals you can route them all to one fader. Now the easiest way is to just drag select the two for example if uh, selected the two vocals just rubber band over the two so just select the two and where it says stereo out this is where they're rooted to. So at the moment all these tracks are rooted to the stereo output which is this one here. This is our stereo output fader. What I'm going to do instead is click on it and go down to bus and what this is going to do is send these to a bus. So what we're now doing is routing these channels out to a bus and this aux track here the input is that bus. So we are actually physically sending them into that bus which is then go to the stereo output. So now what I can do is I can turn both the guitar and the organ down with one fader. I'm not missing her. I'm not missing her at all. So that's one way in which we can use um, aux tracks. What we could then do is um, to save on resources, for example, if you're going to process lots of tracks the same way, we could EQ them together, we could compress them together, we can send them to effects together. Um, so it's a really good way of um, affecting them. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly quickly um, label that aux track. I'm going to call it G and O for my guitar and organ. So now when we set up another send, um, because what I'm going to now want to do is send some reverb, it will tell us which, which um, sends are named so that we don't send them to the wrong one by mistake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send some of the vocal and some of the drums and also some of the guitar and the backing vocals to reverb because at the moment it's sounding quite dry to my ears. So what I'm now going to do is create another aux and the way we do this is to just click hold in the sends page here and go to another send. Now what you'll notice is now when I go to bus, bus 1 is already occupied because I've labelled it. So I'm going to go to bus 2 and what that's going to do is set up another aux. So I'm going to call that reverb or uh, room or something. And I'm going to get a little bit of a room sound going on. Now this is a far better way of adding um, effects. You can insert delays and insert reverbs. But the problem I find is that a lot of the time reverb is used to make it sound like everything is, fits together in the same room. Um, and get everything working together. Um, so it's much better if you can share an effect rather than having to put that same reverb on lots of channels and copy the settings across. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert, I'm going to show you how we do what's called a send and return loop because you are sending to a bus and that is then returning the affected signal into the main output path. 
So we hear the dry and the wet balance between the track and the affected wet channel with the reverb on it. So what I'm going to do is now I've got this room auxiliary. It's connected to bus 2, so how much we send here dictates how much of this sound goes to the reverb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a reverb. I'm going to use the Space Designer, which is a fantastic sounding um, convolution reverb plugin, which accurately models real spaces. Um, you've got a lot of presets here under um, large, medium and small spaces, and you've got some warped effects as well. So you can go to medium spaces and find a room or a hall or a plate, for example. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go the other way in, which is to load an impulse response, because I've got some extra ones loaded up that um, aren't the ones the schools, but they sound really good to me. I'm going to go up for my U40 plate, and I'm going to find there's a really nice one called... Where is it? Find it now. Polish plate, that's the one. So I'm going to load that up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to send some of this vocal to it. So I'm just going to start from the beginning. So you can hear it's very dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this up. And now you can hear that the sound, that the vocal sounds like it's in a room. So what I can now do is I can send some of the drums to it as well just to get them sounding a bit better. So what I'm going to do is just solo the drums so we can turn it up and you can hear the difference it makes. It just makes it sound a bit more roomy. And what I'm going to do is, what I could do is send from the guitar and organ bus to the room. You wouldn't want to do it to that because that would create a feedback loop because it would be sending itself to itself, which would then send itself to itself again. So you get horrible distorted feedback. What I could do is send that to the room, but because we've got quite a sustained organ sound, um, that's not really going to work with the reverb very much. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to send the guitar independently. So I'm just going to send it from itself there. So if you actually notice, even though the guitar is panned right, when it's when it's got no reverb, it sounds like it is isolated on the right. But as soon as I add some reverb, it makes it a bit more stereo and you actually get a bit more of the bleed into the left speaker. So I like that. I'm just going to add some to the backing vocals again. So now this will be our mix with reverb. Now when I mute the uh, room return, which is this channel here, you'll really notice the difference. So it sounds much more live with the reverb, so I'm liking that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another bus here because I want to actually send this to a reverb uh, to a delay so what I'm going to do is select bus 3 now a couple of things are going to happen when I release this one is that we're going to get the new aux track and another one is that each channel is now going to get a third option for the buses so it automatically adds this third option so it, it continues down I think there's about uh, eight sends you can do for each channel I've yet to run out um, and it, it's also added this it's this third one so what I'm going to do is call this one delay and what I'm going to do is insert uh, an echo, simple echo plugin. And I'm going to choose the, the time base for my echo and I'm going to put it down to a quarter note. Now the good thing about this, this way of working is that you can EQ your reverb returns. Um, so if your EQ, if your reverb um, is a bit dull sounding or is getting a bit boomy, you can actually put an EQ on afterwards and cut out some of the lows, for example. You can take out some of the some of the dirty dirty bottom end uh, you could do the same with the echoes what's really nice about echoes sometimes is to actually eq them so that the echo sounds a lot different than the dry sound it's a way of really making your echo stand out um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to send this to the echo so you can hear it working now i like the tail of that but the rest of it, if, as you noticed, got quite messy quite quickly. It started to actually get in the way of the original vocal. Let's 
especially in this second section of the vocals. So what I could do is just turn this up and automate it during different sections and, and I will show you exactly how to do that in the automation video which is coming up. But another way of quickly getting this to work is to actually put a compressor after the echo. Now refer back to the side chaining um, video if you need to refresh your memory as to how to how to apl apply the side chain. Because what I'm going to do is actually some side chain compression. What I'm going to do is I'm going to compress this so that um, we don't hear the echo until we want to. So I'm going to turn this down and I'm going to turn the, uh, the tack fairly quick because I want it sat on and I'm going to turn the ratio up so it's quite quite big. Now what I'm actually going to do now is activate the side chain from the vocal channel. So what this is going to do is the whenever the vocal channel that is present at the side chain, whenever the vocal happens, the side chain is going to make the compressor compress the echo return. When the vocal channel isn't present, i.e. when the vocal stops speaking, the compressor will release, which means that the volume will come up again so we will hear the echo. And it's a really clever way of actually getting um, your echoes to stand apart from your main vocal. So just to reiterate, I've selected the sidechain input to be the actual vocal channel that I'm sending. So when we hear the vocal, the vocal tells the compressor this is too loud, it turns the echo down. As soon as we as soon as the vocal stops, the side chain uh, the, the vocal at the side chain disappears essentially so that uh, there's nothing to tell the compressor to, to compress so that it comes up again all of a sudden the volume of the, the echo comes up so we'll just hear the difference so it's made a huge difference and hopefully what you could see is with the gain reduction was mirroring what the vocalist was saying Whereas if we didn't have a side chain, what would be happening was that this would be responding to the vocal and the echo, so it'd be much less defined. So the the benefit is that you get a really distinguished EQ um, echo. Now what we can also do after this point is EQ the um, the echo and we can really what I like to do is really brighten the echo return okay, it's probably a bit much and I'm going to take a bit of the honky honkiness out of that vocal from there and also take out some of the loads as well so by EQing it in this way We've got a nice echo on the vocal that isn't getting in the way of everything else which it was beforehand. So that's a couple of clever ways to route and hopefully introduced you to AUX tracks um, and we will I will show you how to automate these AUX tracks um, and automate ascends to the echo in the next video. So stay tuned, have fun.